This is Twit. What do we call Rod Pyle? We call him our Spaceman. Spaceman. I have the Pyle Pyle right here of Rod Pyle's books, including interplanetary robots, true stories of space exploration, amazing stories of the space age. This guy is prolific. I love this one. Plans, blueprint for a Death Star. Well, a Battle Star, battle we have star. to call it. We can't say a Death Star. Battle That's Star. right. Because we were afraid of Disney. Trademark, George Lucas. He's also the editor-in-chief of the Ad Astra magazine, the official publication of the International Space Society. <laughs> National Space Society. I made you international. But, you know, it, what nation? You don't say. It could be any nation. So That's it's true. international in that sense. And then uh, you got to have this as on your coffee table, as I do. First on the Moon, a beautiful picture book of the Apollo 11 landing, which came out for the 50th anniversary. Really nice job on this one. This is my favorite of yours. I love this. Thank you. Thank you, Rod Pyle. Thank hey, you oh, for I keeping my stack of books in your studio. I you, have the Pyle Pyle. We've already got too much stuff. <laughs> I love the Pyle Pyle. And we should hey. mention Rod is also the host of This Week in Space with Tarek Malik yes. of Space.com. You talk every week about space. What's new in space? Well... Happy Father's Day. Oh, same to you. you. Same yeah. to you. Happy Father's Day. Did we, you get We made it. Did you get texts or messages or I got uh, one text from the one person who should have remembered to do so. So yes. <laughs> happy. Uh yeah, I haven't heard from my daughter yet, but you know, uh -oh. she's busy. They get busy, yeah. She's busy. She probably forgot that it's Father's Day. <laughs> no, it's okay. Oh, she's sleeping in It's a something. Hallmark holiday, but So, hey, speaking of Hallmarks, Starliner got off the ground. Unbelievable. So, and I love that the Elon had says, if the gravity of the earth were even just a little bit more, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Like, what is that information? Oh, you're talking about Starship. This oh, that's is Starship. Boeing, this is Boeing Starliner. Yeah. So oh, this is Boeing. Boeing. Oh. Who, who we loved. You know, we had kind of a, a Boeing week to week off. countdown yes. on this week, this week in space. Hey, oh, how, what's leaking this week? You know, so <laughs> it's leaking. they've been. They've been at this since uh, they got contracted around 2010, along with SpaceX. The two companies got a contract to uh, re give replacement runs for the shuttle to get cargo and eventually people up to the space station. So a few years after that, uh, Congress finally started sending them money. So they said, OK, uh, SpaceX will give you two point six billion dollars. I say billion to build us Dragon capsules and take up astronauts six times. And Boeing, you get $4.2 billion. Now, it's never been made clear why Boeing got so much more, but there you go. So SpaceX in 2020 started sending up crews. They had been sending up cargo for about five years at that point. And they've sent crews up there eight times where Boeing has continued to have problems. So I'm just giving you the, the recap here, the play-by-play. -play. So, so Boeing like did two it. test They flights. like it so much, they won't let it go now. Well, yeah, so they did two test flights. One was uh, kind of a belly flop. The other one went okay. Finally, they set up uh, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore on June 5th, so we were very glad to see that. There was a helium leak on the pad. They had something about Boeing and valves. There's just bad <laughs> chemistry there. They've had valve problem after valve problems. They had problems with the parachute cords not working the way they should. Then my favorite was they discovered, oops, we wrapped all the wiring in the capsule in flammable tape. We have oh, to take God, in the world it. house. What, that was, was it paper? What are you doing? That was a year or two ago. It was well, actually and, flash and, paper. They use flash paper. That's, yeah. but let's bear in mind, you know, Boeing's been in this business since World War II. They've been building spacecraft since the late 50s, early 1960s. They were a part of Mercury. They were a part of Gemini. They were a part of Apollo. They're part of the shuttle program. So it's not like their first timers like, um, oh, SpaceX, those guys. So anyway, they finally got off the ground. Very glad to see that. They've got five more to fly at least to fly out this first contract. We don't know whether they'll continue after this or not because they've lost about a billion and a half dollars. So, yes, they're they're staying over an extra, I think, 12 days till the 22nd. This is, this is Butch and Surrey's tour. Sunita, of, yeah, of the uh, of the Starliner. Look at this; they're floating around. 
This is cool. I wouldn't want to be inside of it after <laughs> about the paper. I mean, the, yeah. the well, now we know tape. it's okay. It's been fixed. Yeah, it's it's. I, I mean, fixed. it has. It's probably the most fully vetted spacecraft that's ever launched. And it was a point. completely uh, successful launch deployment mm -hmm. docking. In fact, they're still up there enjoying themselves. Well, they did have some thruster shutdown. So here again, valves and software, the two bugaboos, we think. But it, it did seem to work okay. So it's on standby now, uh, sitting there slowly leaking helium, I guess. They said they shut the valves. So I think that's okay. So yeah, they'll come back on the 22nd. Now this one, unlike SpaceX's capsules, this one doesn't splash down the water and land in the Utah desert. Oh, that's So cool. that'll be a, a change. That's yeah. kind of neat. Yeah. That's um, how the Russians used to do it. Yeah, well, that's how the Russians still do it when they fly. Um, and, and, and yeah, so it's well-proven technology. So anyway, we're, you know, clapping for Boeing. Yay, you finally did Yay. it. Where, where you been you, all my you life? You look at this video, and this is such a hideously complex thing. It's really kind of amazing. I mean, I, I know we, we <laughs> well, no, I know we knock Boeing and so forth, but this is really remarkable. What an achievement. Let's give them some credit. That's that's a hell of an achievement. Well, and if you really want to be impressed, look at the video inside of a Soyuz capsule sometime because you see these three people in there huddled side by side, oh, yeah, this surrounded is by yeah. cables and vacuum tubes and stuff. <laughs> vacuum tubes, but I mean, old, <laughs> old style electronics. It's like how they even sit in there. And I was talking to one of the astronauts a few years ago and I said, oh, it's uh, Michael Allegra Lopez. And I said, you know, how do you not get claustrophobic in there? Yeah, you guys, I, I mean, would, you have stuff oof. like eight inches from your face. He said, you know, as astronauts will, they're kind of like talking to football players, right? He says, well, you know, we, we work with the team and generally we do our simulations and you, you find out pretty fast if you're claustrophobic. <laughs> Some I thought, yeah, I so guess I, you would. I want to point out something that these yeah. tablets that you kind of wish they were iPads, they're actually Windows Windows tablets that they're using. Are, are you sure? Yeah, somebody told me that they were. Maybe you think they're oh, iPads? They should be Unix. I oh, they, oh, they might Unix. be running Unix. I don't know what yeah. they're running. Yeah. But, uh, but oh, I hope PCs. they're not Amazon Fire tablets. Look at oh, all would you like to order some more coffee? That'd be terrible. Look at all yeah. those buttons. I just want to press all of them. It really well, is. Well, and cool. that's a lot less than they used to have, man. It's you look so at the cool. shuttle cockpit and it's like everywhere you look, there's another 40 buttons. Yeah. But well, these uh, are highly trained. Steely-eyed spacemen and women, and they yeah. uh, they know what they're doing up there, which is great. That's pretty cool, pretty darn so, cool. So, yeah, let's all let's all give a little round of applause Yay. for Boeing. Hey, they finally got it Yay. done. Yeah, we we doubted you, but now, but you did it. Now I'm worried about the the uh, ISS starship. I hear oh. I hear the ISS is starting to get a little leaky up there. Uh. <laughs> So we had that story on This Week in Space. So they had this emergency, quote unquote, last week. Oh, my God, we've had a depressurization. What do we what do we do? We have to do medical intervention for this astronaut. And, and Tarek, uh, Tarek Malik, my partner on This Week in Space. I mean, I, you know, I do a quarterly magazine. So I listen to these things and go, oh, I wonder if I'll write about that. He's doing minute to minute space updates. So he's. I think he was commuting from New York City back to New Jersey, and he heard, you know, he got this phone call, and they said, there's been a leak, an accident on the space station. So, what? And he's trying to desperately get back to the office to write about it. It turns out NASA was doing a an emergency drill simulation, but oh. forgot to turn off the radio feed. Oh, he freaked out. So, so good. This is an Orson Welles moment, Everything's right? okay. Oh, By Everything's the way, fine. this is definitely yeah. Windows. Look at it. Here's the tablet. There's this. There's the Windows Start menu. There's the taskbar. Oh my bar. gosh! This is a Windows Why would you PC. Do that to yourself. I know. It's definitely updating, Windows. Updating. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we're re well, re interestingly, yeah, it's we're not Windows 11. The Start menu is on the far left. I, it's probably Windows 7. That would be the smart. It's probably thing to XP. Do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the smart. A thing. long, stable platform. Okay, so let's move on to Starship since you mentioned it. Yes. So Elon's, we had our fourth Elon's baby. Elon's big science fiction rocket. We had our fourth test flight on June 6th, so the day after uh, the Starliner launch, which, yes, it got very confusing for people. Um, previous three tests that all had problems ended up in either unplanned explosions or destruct commands. This one got it right. You know, they got up to an orbital trajectory with the top stage. The first stage did its burn back maneuver, came back and did a soft uh, splash down in the Gulf of Mexico. So they didn't try to recover it. They just let it hit, hit 
touch the water and then fall over. But they knew at least they could get it back where they wanted. And then the top stage, the Starship itself, the, the big shiny rocket, uh, came down in the Indian Ocean after having performed its uh, flight up to orbital trajectory, then its, its boost back maneuver and flip and all that. The only thing, and we saw it live on camera, I should have sent you a link. I'm sorry. I forgot to. To heat me up one of those. We had a little bit of a burn through one of the flaps up top. Um, and we got to watch that live, which is the first time I've ever seen a piece of a rocket disintegrate on camera. Oof. But it didn't come off. And the thing came down where they wanted. So we're thinking maybe the end of this month, early next month, we're looking at his next test where hopefully he'll make orbit and stay there for a period. So this is exciting. I we live in a new era of space, which is great, and you know there've really been some hiccups and, along the way, but I think it's pretty incredible. I'm it's very exciting. Well, and and Mike is the baby of the family, but Leo, you and I haven't grew up with I, this. Don't you hate it when people say this is like when we were kids? We were seeing yeah. this stuff every few weeks. I'm loving this and, cockpit tour. It's amazing. It's on space.com if you want to read, want to watch it. Has there been any progress on the spacesuits thing? That continues to be my main interest. I just think find uh, the whole thing. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that because. One of the things while we were monitoring the delays of when the Boeing capsule was going to come back was they were supposed to do a spacewalk. It got delayed due to, uh, quote, suit discomfort, unquote. <laughs> so you're right. All those suits were built in the 1980s. They got to be getting stinky by now. Well, also um, stiff. The shuttle era. Yeah. Yeah. It's just old, you know, and you don't want, but you I mean, how, what a, you what know how when you put your clothes the in the, they you know this, I'm sure, Rob, when you put your clothes in the closet for a while, they all shrink. I imagine the same thing's happening. To them. That's not. I, that's I not think that may be a problem you and I have, that's and it's not, not related to the clothing. <laughs> Every time I get my old pants out, they, they, they fit, <laughs> they're they tighter. They, they've been running away. It's the moths in there. They're re Well, everything. I just thought yeah. they, they clothes naturally shrink with age. Yeah. And I imagine spacesuits the same <laughs> thing. Well, I have my space camp jumper over in the closet, and it's shrunk an awful lot since I first wore it in the 1980s. Actually, yeah, now that I think about it, I have a jacket that my grandparents got me from Guatemala when I was a kid, See? and it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit anymore. Weird. So, um, so Leo, do you, you know, I, I presume you don't have jumpsuits, but you must have something. You've had that moment where you get the zipper up just about to your navel, and then it stops. And it's like you got to pull out and stretch over yeah, and then uh, that's embarrassing. That's a horrible moment. That's a yeah. terrible feeling when that happens. It, it, so the spaces yeah, are they are moon. they getting twenty first century technology? Or are we well, still so stuck so in the last the, the shuttle suits? The ones we're talking about for mm -hmm. the shuttle uh, are for EVA suits, so they have to go outside in those. Right for the SpaceX Crew Dragon and I like the Boeing SpaceX Starliner. Suits. They're very fashionable. Well, and those are just pressure suits. Right. So those are designed if you if you have a, a catastrophic. And they have the nice boots. Okay. They're really nice. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not made for going outside. No, you don't go point. outside in those. So yeah. Boeing's got these really cool blue. You probably saw pictures of them, blue spacesuits. A little bulkier than the SpaceX ones. But uh, they've been working fine. But I think what um, I think what you were asking about was mm -hmm. the the old suits and you know the ones that you do use for EVAs. So they are trying to re-engineer those with an eye towards uh, moon surface suits, but it's going very slowly um, and it's expensive. And, you know, it's one of those things where they spent a billion plus already or or maybe more and kind of, you know, from the wow, press side, we're looking at NASA dollars. going. These are nice looking suits. You've done it before. There's Mike yeah, Sunny cool. and uh, Butch in their, in their new they blue pretty? suits. They're very pretty. Snazzy, they kind of look like space gladiators. Say, snazzy. Yeah. And you'll notice, look at the helmets. They actually are soft and they flip up over the uh, top and zip down. So you can wow. just wear them like a hoodie. Wow. Wow. So they're, space, they're space hoodie. Thugs. Space, space hoodie. Thugs. That's so cool. Yeah. That's neat. That's neat. Um, do we have a little bit of time left? Sure. Why not? Yeah. I always China. Time for space. Let's thank China because Leo majored in Chinese. Thank uh, you, China. China oh, six. Six. Why? What'd yeah. they do? Oh, I say that at the supermarket every week when, when I go there with my girlfriend. Yep. Yeah, yep. they look at me like, look, um, the monkey can talk. <laughs> um, uh, so so China landed their robotic probe, Chang'e 6, on the far side of the moon on June 2nd. And actually, you know, they haven't been doing this for that long, maybe eight years for their lunar probes. Um, drill the sample core out of the surface. And this is the far side of the moon. We never landed anything there in the Ooh. West, either us or the Soviets or the Russians. <laughs> we talked about it, but we didn't do it because it's too hard to reach it by radio, right? You got to put up a satellite as a relay. 
So they did the drill sample, loaded it up, shot it back up into orbit. It docked with an orbiting vessel, and it's going to come back towards the end of this month. Yay. So good for them. They're making that look real simple. Yeah. Now, at the same time, we're struggling with how to do this at Mars to the point that we are all thinking JPL may get their deal yanked and it may get canceled. And looks to me like, it, you know, it's harder out there, but the Chinese have got it figured out for the moon. So they may I hope we can get Mars our Mars samples. samples. I hope we can. There'll well, the question is, I, we'll get them, but but the question is, will we in get them lifetime. here in the U.S.? Or, or you will think China Chinese get will them get them? First? <laughs> I think wow. China's, China will get them. And I think, you know, I think we're in a real foot race with the human lunar program because uh, you know how things go in China, Leo. I mean, they said 2030 maybe for landing people, but we got the party anniversary coming up in 2029. Uh, and I think they'd take just about any chance to make it I work. saw for all mankind. I know that the Chinese win <laughs> yeah. the uh, space race. I do know that. Hey, See, let me show you. Try. Let me show you what today's steely eyed rocket man is wearing. <laughs> this is the ooh, Woo. boy. Does he all pumped good. up and ready to oh, rock? And roll. Oh, man. Look at that. Ooh, Ooh, that's those hot. gloves are cool. Oh, man. Oh, I love the pose with the fists on the hips. Who says that's we very, don't have good-looking spacefarers? Look at that. Is it? Is there air? Do they pump air? I guess they do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's why it's all inflated like that. Nice. So we Does it have any valves? Because I'd be worried. I don't think it explodes. <laughs> oh, zing. You're harsh, man. You're harsh. <laughs> Correct, but harsh. <laughs> Star so, of this yeah. week in space, Mr. Rod Pyle. Uh, subscribe, join the National Space Society if you believe in space exploration and you want to support it. Well, but them. join Club Twit first. Do both. Do yeah. both. They're okay, well well fair. worth it. Thank you, Rod. It's Thank so you, great Rod. to see Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great pleasure to see you. Have and a great, carry on. Have a great Father's Day. Yes, you too. Happy Father's Day. Take care. Let's all, let's all hear from our kids. Yes, let's. Hey, if you like what you just saw, all you got to do is head to twit.tv slash ATG to subscribe. Then smash the bell, hit the button, and I don't know, do that stuff the YouTubers do. 